Welcome to Awaken the Spirits. Yeah. Large scale theme park events like Universal Studios Hollywood's Halloween Horror Nights are experienced by guests in a matter of hours. The design and development of these events takes months, sometimes longer, with incredible attention paid to detail that most people never even think about. Today, in association with the Themed Entertainment Association at USC, fans get a rare behind the scenes look at the art department design process for HHN. Please welcome to the stage the president of TEA at USC, Dominic Diaz. Wow, this is awesome. Thank you all so much for being here. Uh, I just wanted to quickly thank David Markwin and his entire team at Midsummer Scream for having us and ha allowing us to present today's panel. We have two brilliant artists who are brilliant minds that are from the art department team at Halloween Horror Nights. But in addition to their work that is glory, gory and gorgeous, they also are phenomenal teachers. So I am overjoyed that they are joining us today in order to share just a tiny sliver of their incredible breadth of knowledge and experience across the industry. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming to the stage Brandy Kirsten and Jamie Barkowitz. Jamie and I are so thrilled to be able to represent the ladies of horror for, you, for Universal Studio Hollywood Halloween Horror Night. So thank you so much. So we kind of have the privilege to be able to give you a little behind the scenes look at our art department process and how we kind of have our workflow from the beginning all the way to the end and how we create this, this beast of event and bring this to life. So hopefully what we have to share with you today, you can get some insight you're excited about. I know we're super thrilled and a lot of our peers and colleagues are out here today, super excited to have everybody. And as any of you know who work with me and Jamie, I absolutely adore my job, love what I do, I'm passionate about it. My, my hope for everybody out there is that you find passion in what you do and you just take the reins and go with it because we adore our jobs so much. It's scary, it's gory, it's funny. We have a great time. Uh, there's stress, there's tears, there's blood, literal and fake, right? Uh, no, not too much literal. But, uh, but we, have, we absolutely adore our jobs and we are so thrilled to be able to, to share it with you today. We don't do good sitting, by the way. Yeah, by the way, <laughs> yeah, I, will, I will not sit. So when we talk about a, a design project or any kind of a process, how does that process and that project usually start? It starts by building a team, right? So this is what I like to call our core team. And our core team kind of ebbs and flows every year. It just kind of depends on quantity, who's working, who's availability, who's out there. But our core team consists of the likes that you see on the screen. Basically, we start at the top. Our fan favorites, John Murdy, our creative director, and yeah. our our director of art and design, Chris Williams. Now together, <laughs> together they are the creative visualizers for the whole HHN event across the park. And from there, all of us get to collaborate together to obviously bring that vision to life. So next in line, we have Pat Quinn. And Pat Quinn has actually been a staple at Universal for many, many years, and we're proud to have him alongside of us. And he is involved working with John and Chris on creating, obviously, the scare zone looks and the Halloween decor throughout the park. 
And then there's me, your, your HHN art director. Now, I have been working in the entertainment industry uh, art department for just about 30 years. And 22 of those years, I have had the privilege of working right next to my dear friend, my colleague, my teammate, Chris Williams, on many projects uh, in the park, and not just Halloween specific. But I have to say, again, many of you will hear me say it, Halloween Horror Nights, these mazes, they're my babies. <laughs> I love them. Because why? Because of the process. Because we get to bring them from from concept, paper, visualization on that flat piece of board, we get to bring it to life. And then what is that moment? Jamie, it's that gratification moment when we get to stand outside the maze opening night and watch you, the fans, <laughs> screaming in terror and running out of the mazes and just falling out of the doors. That's when we get our gratification to say, we had a part in this. So that's why I love my job. So thank you for enjoying what we do. Yes. <laughs> so along with our team, we also kind of envelop in our art department the costume and makeup world. And, head, and that's head up by Christina Wright, our costume manager, who, who dresses out all of our characters and brings all of the, that, that life kind of 3D, kind of 3D, uh, you know, just like we do. But um, next to her, we have Tony Lindis, and he is our props team manager. And we work really closely with this team. And he, he's in charge of set decoration, props, kind of bringing, again, all of those three-dimensional elements to that blank space, that blank canvas. And that's what even adds a little bit more life to it. He made that out. <laughs> right, I think we have our, part of our team is uh, over here <laughs> with us today. And then we have Rob Tintock, he's our assistant art director, he's been heading up some graphics for us this year, as well as a ton of infield art direction with Chris and I, learning, learning how we do things, and welcome Rob, I see you out here, thank you so much for being on board with us. And then Jamie Barkowitz. <laughs> I lovingly call Jamie my mini-me. And now Jamie joined our team about six years ago and she kind of came to us from a different route. Yeah, so I actually had no intention of working in Haunts and Horror, was not a fan. Um, but I got a part-time job at Universal Studios as a project coordinator, as a temporary gig. It was actually for our Jabberwocky show when we first did it. Um, and I thought, this is just gonna be temporary. I was more into film and TV. Uh, but then I ended up just getting sucked into it <laughs> and loving it. So I was brought on as full time the next year and what I really wanted to go back into is art department because that's where I came from, from uh, film and TV. So I boldly went to Brandy and Chris one day and was like, I want to work in art department. Um, and they were so gracious to sit down with me and talk about uh, what I wanted to do and everything. So I slowly moved my way over to their team and I've been obsessed ever since. <laughs> obsessed. I love it. See? That's how you should be. Again, passionate about what you do. Awesome. All right. And then uh, we have Kelly Prow on our team. She's our art department coordinator. She helps us with all things research. She puts together a spec guide, which is basically something that we send out to our vendors that kind of outlines everything that we're asking them to provide when they have to build or help us paint or help us install a maze. So she helps us put that document together. And then beside her we have Lucas Kolshaw. And I'm sure many of you out there know Lucas. He's been with us for many, many years as a concept artist. And uh, he's the one that takes Chris's vision of mask and makeup, costume, and the character look specifically, and he brings those to life. He adds in all the cool little blood and gore bits and all the cool, the cool factor, I think, to all the characters and the costumes and looks. As well as he provides us lots of coloring looks for other scenic elements uh, in our design. And then we have Troy Zimmerman. He's probably out here today. He's a gentleman wearing a fez cap. <laughs> um, he's one of our resident set designers who's been with us for quite some time as well. Um, and also, 
acts as this character. He's been out there scaring you guys. So he gets a little bit of a cool job because he not only gets to draw it, but then he actually gets to see, you know, be in it and experience scaring you guys. So we're really lucky to have him. And then of course, not pictured, we've got, I have a handful of set designers that work for us, helping us create graphics, helping us design and put our packages together. And a team is built on a core, like we're showing, but literally there's hundreds of people that we work with to create this event. And when I call this event a beast, it is a beast, literally. It's such a huge project, and to have to start, you know, a year out, possibly, um, it's just, there's a lot of pieces that go, um, that kind of have to intertwine to get the, the wheels going, right? So there's hundreds of people out there that we obviously can't mention today, and we just want to make sure and thank everybody who works on our teams that are dedicated, who give everything to this project. Again, love what you do, or you shouldn't be doing it, right? <laughs> Very cool. All right, onward. So how best to show you guys what our process is in the art department? I think visually, we wanted to be able to take you through some steps today. So we wanted to choose a maze that was kind of near and dear to our hearts, one of our favorites, um, and a universal owned IP. We're going to be talking yeah. about the Universal Monsters Maze. Yeah. So, by the show of hands, who got to experience this maze back in 2018? Oh, yeah. Nice. All right, cool. Definitely one of our favorites. <laughs> Very cool. So, the, uh, uh, it's our fa I don't know. I just love Frankenstein. He's got my heart, you know. So I absolutely adored when we got to work on this maze. And because it's a universal original, it, it was kind of like creating from, from nothing, imagining, you know, being able to put this all together from scratch. And watching Chris and John work through the process of, a, of an original is quite fantastic. So how does that process start? Well, it starts at the top with a treatment. Or in this case, this is a truncated version of a treatment. A treatment is pretty much like a script, and it, it's something that John puts together that will walk you through scene to scene, from beginning all the way to end, and he'll work with Chris on what the flow is for the, for the guest placement, and then how to best utilize character placements with that. And then in, in John's treatment, um, He'll usually outline the characters that are going to be involved and any kind of special effects. And that's where we get those kind of notes that kind of pertain to lighting or audio or any other little tidbits, hand props that need to be involved. Woo. Oh, all right. So, so again, this is an outline. Now the outline version comes out a little sooner because it's just to get the information flow going, right? So this gets distributed to our small core group of team members so that we can kind of see what the vision is. There's obviously research on there to kind of give us a, a visual idea of where we're heading. But let's take a step back because to understand what we do in our art department, we kind of put together this workflow and it kind of blows my mind a little bit. When you look at this workflow and you see everything that has to happen in order for just our design process to kind of come together, and, and then obviously it takes off from there, the build process and final realization, it's pretty outstanding. So if you take a look, if you're looking at the design flow right now, obviously it starts at the top with a, a chosen whenever they choose a property and then they figured out where on the the uh, universal property location wise the maze is going to go oh excuse me then then they're able to actually John and Chris are able to get together and work out the whole creative the visuals the through line the story all all of the things that make all the magic right so as that process is, as John is writing the treatment, he's been working with, with Chris, 
Um, then Chris is roughing out a ground plan. And it's literally like sketch, 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 right? On a big piece of paper. And it's all hand done. Arrows everywhere. Oh, here's where characters are going to go. Here's where uh, special effects may be. So it's kind of just like, kind of a light version of what the maze will eventually end up being. So along that same line, all of this stuff starts to happen. Things that we're thinking about while we're developing that ground plan are all the things that are over here on the left side of the screen. <laughs> so all of the ADA requirements, um, any, any special, special effects needs that are gonna have to happen. Uh, let's see, we get into ceiling coverages, there's operational needs. So all of that stuff is being thought about while Chris is building this ground plan. We take that ground plan, we turn it into a fully realized, uh, basically a hand drawn. Yes, we do everything by hand, hand drawn um, ground plan of the full maze. And with that, we develop these packages. And Jamie, you helped me develop the packages. Yes. Speak a little bit to that. Uh, so the packages, the show set design packages, are basically um, ground plans, and then each individual room is broken up by what we call elevations, which is a wall. Um, so you break down the wall or the rooms by wall, and all of our show set designers uh, help us put together all these designs. So actually, our whole show set package is designed by multiple designers, so it's really fun to look through them. You can see different rooms have different styles depending on the designer. Um, and so we put it all together. That's what goes to tech, so they can put it into AutoCAD, make sure engineering and architecture, everything like that is good. And it's kind of just like the rule book for the maze of putting it together. Everyone takes their own copy of the show set designs and really puts in their own notes and everything, and it's what we all follow from audio to special effects. Everyone uses it for. Very cool. Okay, so as that's going on, again, we've taken the ground plan, we've kind of run through, and then we have all these other things that start to develop at the same time. Um, we're working through the graphic process, we're, we're building in color renderings. Um, let's see. Where? <laughs> take us from... Take us from, like, our, our, again, we, uh, so we've hired, uh, we have our set designer team. We create these packages for them. I divvy those up, and all of the set designers start creating. Now, what you're looking at is a formal ground plan, and this is, this is our scenic ground plan. So when Chris gives me a sketch, this is kind of how, how the finalized vision goes. And then again, from here, because this is hand-drawn, we have to build stuff, so everything has to be, uh, you know, a, to scale and everything locked. All the dimensions have to be uh, a right. So we have our technical team who will then take this, take it into CAD, and turn out some construction packages to make it all very formal. So with this, we usually have, could be anywhere from 18 to 22 rooms in a maze, which are scenes. And each of those rooms we will give to a set designer, one of my set designers, and everybody has a certain style. So they're given, they're given this package of information based on kind of what we're looking at, what we're looking for in the creation of, of the look of the design plates that are gonna be produced. So while I'm working on the ground plan, Chris then goes back and starts working on designs. And this is where he kind of comes to life, right? He stays up at all hours of the night, I'm sure. All of these, these looks that he's thinking about in his head. So he's taking that story that him and John have worked on. He's creating these looks. So we get these wonderful little sketchy sketches, just like you see up here. So this is the castle facade for our universal monster maze. And he usually just does a nice little pen and ink uh, drawing like you have here with a few notes on it and passes that on. Now what that gets created into is what we call a plate. Now this is one of our drafting plates. This was done by Troy who I mentioned earlier. He has an architectural background so you can see he's, he's very um, tight with his drawing and his lettering. Oh my god, <laughs> phenomenal. Hand lettered. That's all hand lettered by the way. <laughs> 
So basically, our design plates are laid out so that everybody out in the field who's building can have all the information that they basically need. So you have a little ground plan in the corner, and then we take what we call an elevation, and we stand it up. We take that ground plan, and we stand it up. And that gives us that front look of what we want it, what we want it to look like. Dimensions, call outs, this is where we start to put all of our call outs on here for the textures and maybe the, the type of materials that we want to see um, used during the creation. So why do we do, why do we still do it old school? I call it old school. We're, we're, we're doing everything by hand. Well, it kind of is a, it's a two-fold process. It, it helps us in, in multiple ways. We're able to take the exact um, drawing plate that you just saw and lay in, our color artist is able to lay in some color on top of that to give us that, that final look, that final kind of colorized look of, of what Chris has in his head. And then from there, we can, we're able to distribute this out now to our scenic companies who are helping build and create this vision. And without having to do any other renderings or any other drawings at all, we've taken our hand drawing, we've added the color to it, we can pass this off, and it gives exactly what our view is, exactly what we want to see happen. So, so that's part of why we do it. Um, it also, it kind of helps just, we're able to get the, the shading and the sketching niche and just that kind of that real artistic quality gets to stay with the drawings that, of course, there's a world in which CAD, we need CAD. We need CAD for, for construction and very hard lines, right? But when you're trying to get an artistic vision across very similar to what, what we're trying to do here, it's hard with just straight lines. So that's why we do all of our drawing hand, hand done. Okay, so a big part of our process, since we have such a huge team with so many uh, members all working at once, uh, we have something called an elements list or an elements package that we put together. Um, it used to be like a big Excel sheet, but a few years back, um, we created this new format to kind of help uh, visualize things better. So this is a very crucial part to our process. Basically, this package is put together. It's every single page from each maze. And the, all these boxes that you see, um, someone will write in all the notes for going to the, each responsible party. So it will list everything that lighting needs to do, everything that special effects needs to do, props that need to be made or bought, um, and they list it all out. Then we have this big meeting <laughs> with um, a few members from each of these responsible parties. We sit in this giant conference room. This year it was Zoom. Um, and we go around and we literally list off every single thing on this list. And it is our time, I call it like a big checklist. It's our time to clarify who's taking care of what, was anything missed, and there's a lot of collaboration that goes around um, between the two partners. So say special effects um, is working on a rig that has a static body on it. Well, props needs to handle the body, maybe costumes needs to do the costume that he's wearing, special effects needs to do the rig. So this is a time that we can sit down and make sure we know who's handling what so no one's doing extra work or it's you know two weeks before opening and we're like, crap, we didn't do that. <laughs> um, so this is a really important process for us. Um, and it's always, it's very interesting when we show this to people because it's, you don't really think that this is the type of thing that happens during the process, but it's very crucial for us to understand who's responsible for what and kind of clear any questions because we're rarely all in the same room together. So this is a very rare instance where members from each of these departments are sitting together. Um, and then after this, it's kind of just like phone calls and emails trying to sort out the rest. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. And, and of course, changes always happen. Changes will be happening uh, uh, in regards to almost anything that can happen, right? So changes will be happening uh, all the way through. But, but that's okay. Everybody's prepared. Everybody knows that working on a project like this, you just have to roll with it, right? You, have to, you just have to be prepared. There, there's no problems. There's only solutions. So you just, you jump out and you think, okay, all right, well, what, do we, what do we have to do? Oh, we have to get the props team involved with this. Oh, maybe we can have special effects jump over and help us with a little bit more creation, right? 
So again, everybody that's on our team, I've found, just absolutely loves what they do so much that they're just willing to jump in whenever they need to. So they will cross and jump platform and, and help out wherever they're needed, basically to get the job done. Then we get to the good stuff, right? So, so I think that, that from, from the process that we take it from the paper, we create these packages, the packages go out to the scenic vendors, to the tech, tech departments to start building and creating. And when we start to see it, when, when Jamie and I get to have what we call boots on the ground, oh, favorite part of the process. That's when we get to interact with our vendors and we get to be out there with them every single day walking, walking uh, the property, going from maze to maze to maze, double checking. And it starts from the moment the carpet gets laid. I'm sure everybody knows that our mazes are mostly on carpet and have a carpet substrate. Um, and then it starts that from that moment on. We, we, we walk and we'll walk a framing plan just to make sure that everything's lining up and that dimensions, everything's proper, ADA compliance, that all of our characters have enough access to get from where they need to go, forward and back, right? So this is literally, I, I absolutely love boots on the ground and I will get my hands dirty when I need to. You'll usually see me running around with my hip pouch on, I've got my, my little screwdriver in there, whatever I need, right? I'm out there getting my hands dirty just because I love all parts of this process. So when, when we get to see these, we get to see them in all, all facets. So we see it in the daytime, we get to see it as it's being built, and then obviously we go through how it's going to look during show conditions, right? Two very different looks, and sometimes you guys don't get to see all the, all the little details that we put into these, but because Universal Hollywood is so movie oriented, we really pay attention to those kind of details. Literally, you will walk in and touch textures and everything's real and, and just even the foliage and the vine work and, and the little bits of added rust and calcium dripping. It just adds that bit of realistic movie quality and that's what Chris's intent is, is always about, just really maintaining that type of quality so that when you guys are immersed in these environments, you're just getting that full experience, right? So, and for us, it really is about that full, like, 4D experience. What do you, it's sight, it's sound. We have awesome, amazing audio-visual team that puts together our, our sound for us. Uh, smell. How many of you have have loved the smells as you're walking through a maze? Yeah. Right? <laughs> so it attacks all of your senses. And then obviously sight. What are you looking at, right? Uh, it's dark, but then there's those moments that are highlights and, and maybe every once in a while you'll catch a little glimpse of something that, that we kind of left in there as an Easter egg. And that, that, that's exciting for us yes. when we know all those details are there. So hopefully now, when you go through the mazes, don't stop, you have to keep walking, <laughs> but hopefully you'll pick up on a little bit more of how much detail we actually put into these. So again, we just wanted to give you kind of a look. So this is uh, coming into our maze now. We have our first room we walked into, Phantom's Lair. We just wanted to give you kind of a daylight version. This is how we get to see it when we're walking through. And then the, you see the show lighting just kind of adds that, that, that last little bit of realistic element to it. Now, I, I actually was really excited about sharing this one with you. Again, you can see we have our daytime version, and this, this was a chance for us to actually play and get to create some UV uh, 
paint treatments, right? Something that we just keep, we want to keep exploring and keep expanding all of the textures and the treatments that we do in the mazes. So this was our opportunity to be able to play with, okay, how do you take UV, which is really bright, kind of fantastic colors, how do you make those more realistic and then so that you're viewing it in show light and then when the UV light comes on then you've got this really outstanding UV look. So th these kinds of things give us that opportunity to be able to showcase some of those, those new little treatments and textures and things that we want to try out. So I think that this one was pretty successful with our invisible man disappearing there. <laughs> Alright, so let's talk about set dressing and props. So. This team is amazing. I've had the opportunity to work closer with them this year, and when I tell you that it is just like the most artistic group of people you'll ever meet, it's awesome. They are the team that is in charge of putting in all the set dressing and all the props into the mazes. So within the big props team, we kind of have little sub teams set up that people are in charge of different things. Um, and so props consist of a lot of the dressing, like you'll see the candles and everything on the table on here. But um, another thing that their props team is in charge of is all the static bodies, which seems like not a big deal, but oh my gosh, the amount of bodies <laughs> in the mazes. Oh, no. um, we li quite literally have a morgue of bodies <laughs> and that our team not only uh, pulls out every year to match the structure of each character that they need to, but they also have to repaint their faces, do their facial hair, put different wigs on them, match their clothing. It is a whole process and it's quite fascinating to watch um, a lot of the artisans just transform all these figures into you know period pieces like this so this is a great example that we love showing in this banquet room because we had so many bodies around this one table um, and it just really showcased how different each of them are and all the work that they put into them um, and then you can also see some other great set dressing in here um, a really cool challenge that the prop scene has maybe not always cool, but it is trying to find very specific props. Um, so how the props team finds everything is out of so many different venues. You, it could be eBay, it could be a thrift store, it could be Amazon, it could be actual warehouses, anything. So when we have a maze like this um, that's more period centric, it's trying to find those items that really make sense for that period um, and then blend in with everything. Um, and then moving into our antiquities room, this is another big one for the props team. They killed it. This is such an interesting room because it's filled with all these different things. Um, for This was the mummy room. Um, so to find all these cool little antique objects, they just, um, one of our set decorators, Peggy, she's the love of my life. Um, she is the best shopper you will ever meet in your life. She will find anything that we need for any maze. It might be in her backyard, it might be in a store that she saw 10 years ago. She will know where to find it. Um, and so that's one of the big challenges that the prop scene has and they just don't think they get enough credit sometimes for the things that they have to go through to match um, for some of the time periods or things that they have to do. This maze specifically, we had more freedom, like we said, because it was a universal owned. Um, but when it's another one that has to match a movie, um, going through and trying to make sure that they're matching exactly those props from the set. It's really, really fun job. <laughs> Absolutely. And again, you can see, you kind of see our daytime version and everything looks a little flat, right? But look at what happens when you put the show lighting on, right? Like for me, actually the process of walking through when we're doing like, we're doing our last looks with lighting at night and oh, and then all of a sudden they're starting to pump the audio in and we can actually get a feel for what it's gonna be like. And it just totally comes to life. Again, this is our version of movie, right? Where we're bringing everything, that realistic touch to these mazes so that you guys can be fully immersed and really, really get into those environments that we create. The lab. This was our big moment in this maze for any of you that got to experience it. This is the uh, climax of the whole maze where you go into uh, Dr. Frankenstein's lab, he's putting together the bride, and they pull the lever and all of these crazy mechanics and everything go off. This was a huge special effects and um, props integration and task. Like, this is a great example of how every department worked together to bring this room to life because you have the special effects with the bride um, in a rig where our actors are sitting at a table that's covering um, most of their bodies so it looks like she's all cut up. 
Um, you have the costumes department making sure that she's dressed uh, appropriately. Um, you have special effects making sure all of those lights are going off and everything's triggered when a performer pulls a lever or pushes a button. Uh, you have you know, our props team set dressing everything. They were building all those gauges and those machines and pulling things um, from different areas and building them from scratch. Um, and it all just, and then we have audio, and, and the whole team really in this room is such a great example of the collaboration and the teamwork that goes into making these mazes. Um, and if any of you were there to see this, it was awesome the moment that they pulled the lever and everything went off and the smoke. And it was one of those moments where, like me and Bernie always say, we're like, love our job. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. And again, you know, I, I love color. Everybody that knows me knows that my world is full of col color, obviously, because I'm in the art department, right? So, so this speaks volumes to me just because I love our color palettes that we choose. Again, realistic, but when it's in the moment, you know, we get to just really highlight all of that. So I just, I adore textures and colors, materials, all of that. So there is just no better job, I, I believe, than being in the art department and being being able to bring all this to life. So what, what was actually really cool about this maze was we got to add a little bit of an extension, right? We wanted to do a little bit more of a guest experience. So we got to involve a little bit of the queue line that kind of went into this maze. And inside the plaza, we got to add a little bit more scenery and, and, and set dressing. To, to kind of help you even get more enveloped into the storyline as you walk through. So again, we took our, our, our big giant ground plan and that, that little, that little um, quarter inch ground plan you'll see got, got drawn in there and then what do we do? We take that, we elevate it up, we start looking at placements of of uh, graphics and how all that is going to be scratchy look, what kind of look is it, what kind of feel is it going to be, the vineage, the signage, all of that stuff. And again, calling out all the materials so everybody who gets one of our design plates knows exactly pretty much what the intent is, right? And again, we got to play with lots of UV in this maze as well. So this was a great representation of uh, what our color artist does. He takes our elevation that we did, uh, the flat paper elevation, adds all the color, and then it allows Chris to kind of ebb and flow the graphics along the wall kind of as, as he wants to tweak it. And then we get to the final version, and then this will go out to our scenic vendors who will then paint everything and bring all those colors and everything to life. So again, you have your, your daytime view, and then you have your show condition. And this one I just loved because even daytime out in the park, when you have people that maybe aren't even into Halloween, they got to actually experience this really cool facade and it became such a huge photo op out in the plaza. I was really proud of it. And I know Jamie, I saw a picture, there's lots of pictures of Jamie out there oh, yeah. the, standing with her bride, you know. <laughs> So again, this is just our opportunity to be able to push these materials and these textures and things that we want to, to kind of showcase the design and just kind of highlight a few things. Ooh, then we get into the Lucas. This is the Lucas Colshaw work. So again, on that timeline, that, that workflow that you saw, Lucas, once that ground plan is done and we kind of have these designs kind of ready and we're working in process, he's already been working with Chris and Chris has been doing sketchy sketches and feeding him ideas for costuming and makeup and um, all the sculpt work that's going to happen for all the masks. So Lucas, these go through a ton of iterations, right? Different color palettes. Uh, different feelings. Every character, there may be uh, three, three of the same character that have different looks, right? So all of the iterations Lucas has to go through from beginning to end and create these visuals. So he'll create the costume look that then helps Christina, our costume manager, start to develop those costumes. The makeup, the, I'm sorry, the mask, the, the mask and makeup look will then go to our, our, our mask vendor. And from that, he's able to then take 
and sculpt out these visions. And like anything, these go through many, many iterations from the beginning, the one on the left, and that's just that it gives Chris the opportunity to say, oh, I want a little more scar here, or add more teeth, or, or more, I don't know, whatever, <laughs> whatever else he feels like adding uh, to, to make the character more lively, really give it that impact, feel that realistic feel. What would really happen? How would it really look if he was his, his brains and everything redone in his head? How would that really look? So again, we're really going for that realistic, as much of that realistic quality that we can get to the whole process. Not just the scenic design, the set design, but even into the costume, the, the mask, makeup, all of that. Yeah. <laughs> So um, you hear me talk about, uh, every, uh, everybody that knows me hears me talk about being passionate about what you do and your creative, the creative process that we bring to the table. And I just like, I absolutely, absolutely, like I said, adore my job. And the key thing is all of the people that we work with on a daily basis. And that collaboration is huge. And actually, I just wanted to point out just a couple photos on here, because we have a serious job, but we get to have fun. <laughs> we have a lot of fun when we do our job. So um, the photo that's in the upper right-hand corner, sometimes we actually have to get into our jobs a little more. Than, than you realize. So, uh, oh, what is the placement going to be of a person who's getting their, you know, getting smacked in the back of the head? Things like this. So, <laughs> again, we're going for reali realism here, right? So sometimes we have to act it out. We have to get into these positions. So we're always, we're always um, researching and developing these, R&Ding these things behind the scenes and being able to come up with, oh, this is a better way, this is a better placement. So we're always at our, our prop warehouse with all of our prop artisans helping us create um, you know, any kind of new scene that we, that we need to create. And then, of course, every once in a while, there's us jumping into the scenery just to get our, our cameo shots as well. Jamie, add anything else to the process? I mean, just to echo Brandy, working on this project, it's, you know, it's very um, fast paced and there's a lot going on and we, Halloween is 365 for us. Uh, we work on the, our core team and everyone is working on this year round, but man, do we love it. And if you're interested in getting into haunts and specifically in the art department, uh, just as Brandy keeps saying, she always says it to me, you gotta love what you do and just be ready to like jump in and get your hands dirty. Absolutely. So actually, I'm just going to step back just a little bit because I just want to make sure that you guys had a really good opportunity to look at that, that workflow, that design workflow, because it's like super, it really is, it's a creative process, but when you outline it um, with this workflow that we have and with all of the trades and all of the vendors that have to get involved with this process, again, I look at this and it just blows my mind. So basically, when we, when we are working through this process, and like I said, a lot of this stuff is happening all at the same time. And we have all of these considerations. And every year, this flow actually ebbs and flows. We add to it because um, you know, we are governed by the Los Angeles County, county rules and guidelines. So we have, to, we have a lot of ADA compliance and a lot of things to think about. So every year, this ebbs and flows, and we add new, new boxes to the workflow of things that we have to consider, right? Um, we add, let's see. What, what, what did I want to talk about here? What was, what was super? What about this part? What part of this process, Jamie, do, do you feel is, is the most valuable part of the process? Of like the whole workflow? I would say just schedule. <laughs> um, there is a, there's a deadline. There's a deadline whether we want it there to be or not. There is no pushing back the opening date. There is when we need to be open and ready to go. And you always have to think in your back of my mind is that, yeah, my art can all be done, 
but my art doesn't matter if other parts of the process aren't done either. So this whole flow and the most valuable part for me is seeing what all needs to be done and so that we can definitely start prioritizing and realizing um, where we need to help out other departments or just speed up the process where we can make room to go back. And you know, part of that process that I was speaking to earlier about how we take that sketchy sketch and then we turn it into that final ground, that, that scenic ground plan, this version here, right? From there, actually, one of the trades that we work with is our technical design team. And they're the guys that, again, I said, they take this and they take it into the CAD version and they turn out all the construction plates um, that, that go out to the departments that are building everything from the ground up. So we have a great, we've built a great relationship with our technical department within Universal to also just, um, Technical people and art people sometimes are very different, right? We see things very differently. We're looking at things from an artistic point of view and they're looking at things from a very logical, technical mind, right? No, you can't make that happen. Um, so actually that's one of, the, one of the beauties I think from kind of growing up in this industry is I've had the opportunity to be on the construction side and I know how things get built. So because I know how things get built, I can draw it, and then I can tell my tech team, this is how I want it done, and they'll be, no, logically it doesn't work like that, or, or they'll give me some rational reason, and we'll talk it out, and that's okay, because again, I know how things are built, so I kind of I know how to preempt, how to preempt a design as we're going through the process, right? So I can actually help our tech team by, by thinking ahead of them a little bit. And I have to give them props because like I said, over the years we've developed a huge relationship and they've been able to just like um, see our art vision now. So now when we walk together, they get it. They know why we do certain things the way we do. They know why we have a certain flow. Right? And it, it's for your guest experience. It's to further immerse you and, and, and just like scare the pants off of you, right? So, so I, I love our, our collaboration and the development that, that happens with all of the trades. And even lighting, special effects is huge. Special effects is, is I, it, it's getting even bigger every year because of course we want to push the boundaries and we want to be able to, to add more cool effects and, and again, using more materials and, and cool colors and all of these things to actually you know, give you guys a better, full, realistic experience. So I think that, again, working with all of those trades, it just, it helps us in, in learning, I learn every single day. Again, my tech department teaches me, I teach them. My prop department, I learn from them every day about what we can and can't do. So this, this job is a learning process from, I've learned for the last 22 years, and I just, I adore that, and I know that from here on out, I will be learning until the day that one of you takes over my job, right? <laughs> So, uh, what are we missing about our process? I absolutely adore the sketches and the design elements that Chris puts together for us. And it's really, it's really a cool thing to be able to, again, take his designs that are like this and translate those into those those bigger show elements for you guys. And I think that trying to capture, again, we go from that sketchiness to some of my set designers, again, Troy has an architectural background, so he'll tend to do a lot more of the architectural looks of things and trying to bring that quality to, to facades and interiors and things like molding and, and, and heavy architectural uh, scenic elements like that. I have another scenic designer that works with us who works in movies, and he's got lots of sketchy, sketchy look to his work. So I'll usually give him some plates, 
some rooms that where we're trying to get that kind of edgy type of a feel, right? So I really do work closely with my team of set designers who work um, kind of off property. And they get these packages, they turn these little packages around in about three days. They'll be able to take our sketches and all of the research um, that Jamie's done and put in there and be able to give us our finalized plates. And then, once we've created all of these, each room has a plate and maybe has detailed plates that go with it. Basically, we, we have what we have, a, a full package. And then from there, then that's, that gets distributed to all of the trades, and that's when everybody starts like asking a thousand questions, right? How, how is this integrated? What, what are you guys thinking here? So that's when, again, we get into the elements list, and it just kind of trickles. So it, it is that huge trickle down flow from the very top all the way, it kind of trickles down. We have a lot happening. It starts to happen at this level, and then it starts to trickle down. And then the craziness ensues when we start to come up to that moment of opening when we're getting closer and closer and they start giving us our countdown in our meetings and saying, oh, we're now 25 days out. <laughs> it's like, oh, we've got so much to do, right? So there's, there's literally nothing on the property that we don't touch. I, I'm serious. I, I know these mazes like the back of my hand, they are my babies. I've called them my babies because I get to see them through from Chris's concept, from this phase, all the way to that final build, to that moment when Jamie and I are standing out there with Chris and John and just, you know, loving that moment. So um, that, that being able to touch every aspect of it, I just, there, there is, seriously, I love my job. There's no better job on the planet if you're into being creative, if you're trying to um, work with new materials and new textures, huge with collaboration. Again, our team, our team is massive once you get outside of the core group, right? So you have to be on top of that collaboration and be willing to work with people and, and throw ideas out there and ebb and flow, right? Not everything works and sometimes you have to rethink about an idea. But what did I say? There's no problems, there's only solutions. So that's what we're always trying to think about and that's my job is taking Chris's vision and running it through the process to help through that final creation, that final build and, and trying to make it as smooth as possible and working with all of those trades and collaboration. So I absolutely, our process for collaboration, I absolutely adore. I think it's phenomenal. Anything else? No, I just wanted to thank everyone for joining us today. I hope we gave you a cool inside look at the art process. Maybe you'll learn some things you didn't know about what goes into building these things that we have. And again, we were so excited to be representing the ladies of horror. <laughs> It's been uh, many years, like I said, 22 years that I've been beside Chris, uh, kind of behind the scenes. Um, and everybody that I work with um, and our students out here know I adore my job. I love talking about what I do so much because I guarantee that somebody out there is going to have my job one day. Yeah. You better, I hope. Right?